Hello everybody and welcome to Steve Jackson's Sorcery. This is a four-part adventure made by the same people that made 80 days. Uh, you guys may remember that from a while ago where we went around the world in 80 days or in my case like 112. I don't actually remember. But this is on um, this is another adventure game but done more in a style of a tabletop role-playing game. So I think this is going to be awesome. Plus, it's four parts. Three parts have been released. This game has the first two parts. Third part's out. Fourth part comes out later this year. I'm really excited to play this because, like, 80 Days was rad. So if it's anything like that, it's going to be awesome. And from what I know about this game, it's like that and way more. But what's curious is that there's no sound at all. It's, it's dead silent, but this is pretty. All right. So we're going to start with part one, the Shamatunati Hills. Maybe sound will kick in. Okay, still nothing. That's fine. That's fine. Um, yeah, the dude, I guess. She's pretty She's pretty hot, though. Ah, uh, ooh. These are big choices. Can I click on them and find out more about them, or is this just strictly gender? It probably doesn't make a difference. I'm going to go with her. She's She's got more detail. Oh, there we go. It usually just comes rocketing in. That's awesome. You have walked the wilds of Kakabad through Karir and the spiteful backlands all the way to Mampang. You have survived traps, thieves, serpents, and vengeful gods. And now it is here. The crown of kings! Ah, oh, this is some good shit. It is said the crown was never forged, only found by Chalana the Reformer, a lowly foot soldier who became emperor of the eastern world. Such is the power of the crown. The air around it crackles with influence. Wait. The crown sits unguarded on a pedestal of light. After so many hardships, can it really be so simple? Or is this yet another deception? Sure enough, as soon as you think it, the image of the crown begins to flicker. You turn around to see something approaching. It's a trap! Oh. And startle yourself awake. You are alone, exhausted, in a little hut on the outpost settlement. Your unimaginable journey is not even a single step begun. Ah, here we go. Get a little glimpse of the map, and it just goes. Ooh, I'm excited! Ooh, ah, chills. Sorcery! Ha <laughs> ha! Yes! There's a place up there called Dumpus. <laughs> Part 1. The Shah Mutani... Shah Mutnati Hills? Shah Mutnati, I guess. Awesome! Okay, I don't know... Uh, okay. I'm just, I'm trying to get used to the HUD. So we have stamina, gold, rations, like a standard tabletop game. Panther. Also, if there's a choice that's difficult to make, I have actual dice here. Like, good old standard tabletop, D20s, D6s, D8s, D12s, all that shit. Uh, so if there's a decision I don't know how to make, I'm gonna roll a dice. And we're gonna play it like that. Uh, I don't know what this shit down here, I'd pray. Spell book, item, center, and whatever that is. Click your character. Alright. It is sunrise. You dress, breakfast on bread and goat's milk, and collect the pack and sword from beside your bed. Test the blade, pray for luck, leave the hut. Let's test the blade. You pause to test the blade against your thumb. The blacksmith has done well. The edge is keen and draws a narrow line of blood. Outside the hut, you hear the outpost settlement stirring to life. Let's pray for luck. Taking a moment more, you close your eyes and raise a prayer to your spirit guide. This morning, it has the form of a panther. But what will become, what it will, or what will it become once your journey truly begins? A great calm descends upon you. So my spirit guide is a panther. Oh, I can click on this? No? Okay, weird. Time to go. So what is it? What's holding it together? It looks like the pages are being, like, stitched together. That's kind of cool. Time then to depart. You lift back the flap of the hut. The flap of the hut. Why does my hut have a flap? Whatever. And step into the early morning sunshine. Ah, yes. So uh, I'm... Uh, draw a path to the flag. Neat. Eyes follow you as you leave the hut and walk towards the great Shamun. I need. I need to figure out how to pronounce this. Shamutanti. 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 I'm gonna go with Shamutanti, like Shamu. The great Shamutanti Wall. The frontiers people of this tiny settlement are well aware of your mission. Greet them. You turn to them and bow. Some smile in reply, but are too afraid to approach. Others make gestures of protection. You're going beyond the wall, and so they believe you to be cursed. The man is waiting on the path to the Kento Pani Gate, uh, the final door between Analand and the wilds of Kakabad. You recognize the sergeant of the Sightmaster Warriors. He holds out his hand. 
So this is the, the sergeant of the Sidemaster Warriors. He looks pretty fucking cool. Uh, greeting, sergeant. Greeting, sergeant. Because I'm a chick, so I have to have a fancy voice. He touches his forehead with two fingers. You're almost ready, my lady, he says. I have for you a gift from the king. Twenty-four gold pieces. It's all we can spare this time. He holds out a pouch. Uh, take it. You accept the gift graciously. Thank you. You should boil some supplies before you pass the wall, the sergeant says. And you must collect your spell book if you wish magic to aid you. Finally, should you wish to practice your sword play, I will go one last round with you. Then he points with his staff towards the training ground. Okay. So, buy rations, collect my spell book, and training ground. This is awesome. Alright, uh, I assume I want to do all of these things. Let's grab my spell book real quick. And we'll take care of that right now. One of the huts, set slightly back from the others, is decorated with glyphs and strange symbols. A terrible smell emanates from its doorway. It is the hut of the chief ma mage. I was going to say magician, but it's not. Chief mage. He has been preparing your spell book for days, reading star charts to work out which spells will be available to you in different locations in the hills and beyond. Go inside. I want the book. Why would I want the book? You let the flapping go inside. The mage looks up at you with haggard, sleepless eyes and presses the book in your hands. Do you understand how to use this? Tell me. Each spell is crafted through the alignment of three stars, he begins. The spell Zap, for example, is made by aligning Zarathrusta. Oh, so by spelling the name. Okay. That's interesting. I wonder how it's arranged. So, if I wanted to use a lightning spell, I'd have to spell Zap. It looks like it's limited to three letter words. Okay. Well, that's not important. What matters is what the spell is called and what it does. Zap will give you control over lightning. Hot will create a fireball. And Foof will create a force field around you. Shall I continue? Tell me more. The law spell is formed from those three, and it will allow you to control the will of unintelligent creatures. The wall spell is quite different and uses different stars. The order matters, you see. Wall creates an invisible barrier. You will find the rest in the book. Tapping leather bound volume. Okay. So, that's interesting. Uh, hopefully the book tells me, otherwise I w should have written that shit down, but originally this was a mobile game, just so everybody knows, uh, so I don't think that's part of the game. Thank you. He scratches absently out his ear. Remember, some spells will cost more, cost you effort to use, but the ones that don't will not work without a focus, an item of some kind. You will need to read the book to know what to do. Research magic using the spell book button on the map. Okay, let's take a look at that, just real quick. Sorcery spell book. This volume contains the 48 spells of high craft as discovered and passed down from generation to generation of sorcerers from the early days of the Eastern world. Each spell is formed of three letters and each spell will ca take energy to cast. I assume by energy mean, they mean stamina maybe? Or is stamina health? Furthermore, some spells will fail without the use of a particular item or focus. So zap, foo, flaw, dumb, extremely clumsy, hot, fireball, creates invisible wall. All of, uh, uh, if you only learn six spells for your adventure, learn these. Got it. All these spells are extremely tiring and will cost you three points of stamina. More economical versions exist, though some rely on the caster owning particular items of power. Okay. So, zap, hot, foof, wall, law, and dumb. Big. Uh, will inflate the body to three times normal size, increase the power of the caster, especially used against large opponents, but may be used in caution in a combined spacious. Walk uh, requires a gold coin, which is placed on the caster's wrist. Uh, it will transform into an invisible metal shield, but the coin will be lost. Interesting. Dupe um, opens any locked door. Requires beeswax. Okay, so I'll take a closer look at this um, when it's needed. Uh, but that is a good start. Let's head over to get some rations. Probably not a lot, but let's see how much they are. Small traders in the settlement supply the side master warriors with weapons, armor, food, and clothing. You go over to the sergeant to a stall selling flatbreads and cheese. Two pieces per ration, Gun owner says. Two piece, two gold pieces per ration, huh? Uh, that seems steep for fucking flat like flatbreads and cheese. That seems that seems like a lot of money. I wonder if I can haggle. Don't you know who I am? I'm Anolan's great hope, you tell him. The man looks uncomfortable. Oh, I know that, but I'll have to feed my family today, whatever happens to the crown. Alright, alright, that's fine. I'll buy two rations. So, there we go. Hand over your coins, and the man places two rations carefully into your pack. You must be sure to eat every day, or you will suffer. Uh, the sergeant tells you, standing at your side, eating more will give you extra strength, but it is not necessary. 
Check the contents of your pack uh, using the item button at the bottom of the map. So, let's take a look at what I've got in my pack. So, we got the spell book, uh, rations, treasure. Interesting. What weapons do I have? I have a sword that has apparently no details. Two meals, all right. Okay. Uh, last thing is to go get some training. Let's see how combat works in this game. You walk with the sergeant to the training ground and he wraps the base of his staff in leather. Uh, ready my sword. To begin, the sergeant says, we practice using we practice the stances. First, defend yourself against me. Choose your attack power by dragging your character sideways. To defend, stay fully left. Defend. Drag my character sideways. Drag to change the attack power. I'm trying to drag. Maybe I on. Side master is a powerful enemy. By defending, you will receive minimal damage from any attack he makes. The side master sergeant defends himself as well. The round is a stalemate. My next attack will be one of my strongest, he declares. If you can perform a full attack, you may overpower me, but otherwise you had best defend yourself. For strong attack, pull your character to the right. To defend, pull your character to the left. Strong attack. Charge! So I did 9, he did 8.9, which means I was able to overpower him and defeat him. Yours, play a strong attack, overpowering the Sight Master Sergeant, he bows. You have finished me. Excellent. No stamina lost, flawless fighting. Awesome. You seem to remember the basics, Sergeant says breathlessly. Good, another round? Now nah, I got it. You shake your head. Very good, Sergeant agrees. But if you wish about in earnest, then I warn you, I will not go easy on you. He indicates the wider yard where the space for a true match. So, fight in the yard, or approach the gate? Eh, let's go to the gate. I have no time for silly combat. You reach the foot of the mighty gate. It is sealed. The sergeant places one hand on the wood. The gate has been locked for some time to deter raiders, he tells you. But you will have no difficulty. The stars in this place will allow the dupe spell to be crafted. And he stands back. Cast a spell! Oh! Oh! Oh, so that's how they do it. So dupe, huh? So I need D. O. P. Dupe. Opens and locks doors. Cross one stamina. Dupe! You weave the spell. One by one, the great tumblers of the door begin to crack and groan. Then the hinge turn. And with a noise like hail on a canvas roof. These gates have not opened since our last champion was lost, the sergeant says. I wish you more luck than he. Perhaps you will even meet him on your travels. Uh, if I fear he's dead. If I overtake him, he's too slow. That does not concern me. Uh... I fear he is dead. Sidemaster nods, peering at something on the horizon. I believe he is returning, but transformed. I hope you do not meet the same fate. He stands back from you. Enter the gate. Boop, boop, boop. Together you step into the shadow of the wall. One last word, he declares. When you have the crown, find the highest point you can, or you can find. We will be watching. Watching from where? From here. Side master warriors are selected from birth for their incredible powers of telescopic vision. You can't help, or you cannot help but wonder how far he can see. Uh, enough talking. Time to go. Striding away, you pass through the gate. The faces of the folk watch your departure reveals the hopes that rest on you in your quest. The early morning air is crisp, and the rising sun paints the slopes in shades of peaceful beauty, concealing the evil that lies ahead. Do 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 do. I wonder, can I zoom out at all? Well, maybe I can, but not right now. Boop 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 boop. The path winds through slope, or the path winds through slopes of wild scrubland. The countryside is deserted, and the eerie silence is broken only by the cawing of the occasional crow. There is a spell for hearing what they say, but you do not have it equ the equipment it re requires. The birds appear to pause in the air to examine you as they pass. They make you uneasy, as if you were an intruder in their presence. Keep walking. Barely an hour beyond the wall, and the air begins to grow foul. The sh uh, Shamud Tanti Hills are infested with the pestilence of the backlands. It saps the energy from your body, leaving you feeling nauseous and weak. Um. Hmm. Cover my mouth. You cover your mouth with your neck scarf, but it does no good. They warned you of this. You will grow accustomed to it the longer you are out here, but for the moment you are very careful. Your maxima stamina just decreased. Oh, geez, by half. You can see your stamina at the top of the screen. If it reaches zero, you'll be too tired to carry on. Stamina can be regained up to the uh, maximum by eating rations or resting. A low rise, travel cross country. Oh, geez. I don't know. Both seem like 
decent options, but this is like a road, and it looks like there's a village over there, so I think I'm gonna stick with the low rise. Let's hope I don't make the wrong choice. Another hour passes and you crest a small hillock, from the top of which you can see the path continuing downward into a small settlement of huts. Look at the village. From this distance, it's hard to make out much about the town, except it must be desperately poor. The fields on either side are brown with caked mud and few penned animals are thin and wizened like thirsty vines. No wonder the Sidemaster Warriors don't trouble themselves to protect this place. There's nothing here to protect. So I could go through the village. Or I could avoid the village. So they're poor, huh? Which means there might be thieves. Let's go through the village. I think they might have information. This might be a terrible mistake. If I die, like, abruptly, I'll just go back and make different choices. Of course, if you cannot handle a town like this, then you could not hope to survive Kakabad proper. You follow the path down into town. The round huts are made of the hard-baked bright clay, and the roofs are thinly thatched. As you pass, eyes appear in the dark doorways, tracking your every move. For a moment, you think they will allow you to pass unchallenged, but then a villager appears from one of the dwellings and block your path. Look at him, threaten him, push him out of the way, cast a spell. Let's cast a spell! I believe dumb is a spell. Which could, uh, which could be funny. Uh, let's see, zap is a potential one I can do. Um, let's see. So I have AI and, um... Hmm, okay. I think law might be possible. Law. Control non-intelligent creatures. Three stamina. I might be able to I might be able to talk my way out of the situation. Um look at him. He's five feet tall, they cannot grow much taller right here in the poisonous air. He has the thick set arms and thighs and half clothed or er, is half clothed in tattered breeches. His eyes are wild and his uh, long red hair and beard standing out from his face in a wiry tangle. Holt stranger, he commands. What business have you in Cantopani? Cantopani. What? My god damn it. Cantopani. Cantopani. Let's see, go with that. I'm merely passing through, you reply calmly. There's no need to be concerned, but the villager is not content. Passing through to where? He replies, wild eyes gleaming. There's nothing out there any honest traveler should want to see. Uh, it's none of your business, stand aside. The man stands fast for a moment, his eyes locked on you. Then a moment later, he is darted away. The rest of the hut stays still and silent. Their inhabitants have witnessed the scene, but are content to leave you be. You stride on into the very center of the village. There are a few larger houses here. Even Cantonope has its nobility, it seems. Uh, but the only spot of interest is a small inn offering food for sale. I got plenty of food. I'm good. doop doo doop of course, the standard RPG would be to go into the end, but I think I'm, I'm fine. I'll just keep moving. Tavern's not worth your time. It is too poor and meager to offer much hospitality. You head out of Kentonope... Kentopani... Whatever. Fuck it. Uh, along the path to the Shamutani Hills. Passing the outlying huts, you feel strangely uneasy. Hissing from within and sly faces disappearing from doorways make you feel decidedly unwelcome. Then at the edge of town, you pass a large boulder and at once two rough-cut villagers spring out with swords drawn. Bandits. Two against one, the first declares. You're lost, calls the other. So hand your things over. Come on. Hand over backpack, reason with them, deal with these curs. You draw yourself to your full height. You have mistaken me for someone else, you declare. You will suffer for that mistake. The bandits growl and advance on you, one on either hand. Cast a spell. What would be useful in this situation? Um, what's the, what's the fire one? It's hot. I don't, it doesn't look like I have hot. Um, L, law. Uh, let's see, A's and O's. And what looks like, um, G's and W's. Okay. Fog? Fog might be a thing. Summon darkness. And I might be able to escape in the darkness. Let's give that a whirl. Fog! You cast the spell. The bandits flinch, waiting to be incinerated by a fireball, but all that happens is smoke begins to rise from your body. They dissipate in the air. The bandits start to laugh, and their good humor dies. Uh, and the first comes for your blood. Oh, okay, so that didn't work. Damn it. Okay. Uh, the first bandit uh, is cackling and grinning. Time to put this creature in his place. Uh, I'm just gonna go for it. Charge. Yeah. 
You should have made things easier for yourself. The bandit goads and launches forward with the sword. You go straight for his throat, knocking him back hard. The smile on his face splits into a cry. Then the bandit stops and coughs blood on the earth. Uh, let's try a, a weaker attack. Ah, nice. Still high enough. You cut the imbecile, no slack. You aim a savage blow at his heart. The bandit gasps his last as you run him through. No stamina lost, flawless fighting. The second bandit takes one look at his dead colleague, turns and makes a run for it. Let him go. He will tell the others to try uh, not to uh, try and interfere with the Annalanders in the future. Turning back to the path, you begin walking once more. Uh, after about half an hour, the way becomes an uphill incline. 